Hurricane Ian shredding the Florida Peninsula, making landfall near Fort Myers as one of the most powerful storms in the state's history. The impacts of this storm are, are historic and the damage that was done uh, has been historic. The Category 4 storm slicing southwest Florida with winds of up to 140 miles per hour. Peeling off roofs from homes and a dangerous 12-foot storm surge scattering debris everywhere. Mangled boats littered along the beach, wreckage scattered across the sand, and the high waters stranding families who thought they could ride it out. We weren't prepared for quite a storm of this magnitude. We were hoping it would dodge us. It, it didn't. It got worse. Others had to be rescued by first responders. Scenes of residents being trucked out of floodwaters by massive vehicles or simply being carried out. Ian unleashing its wrath on cities inland. Kissimmee drenched in rain. Floodwaters creating a lake around these buildings. And in Orlando, patients from a nursing home facility had to be rushed to safety. First responders escorting them out one by one. From southwest Florida to north Florida, Hurricane Ian leaving a trail of destruction. Ahead of his visit to FEMA headquarters, President Joe Biden on the phone with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, approving the state's emergency disaster declaration, unlocking federal funding for the long road to recovery ahead. We're continuing to see deadly rainfall, catastrophic storm surges, roads and homes flooded. We're seeing millions of people without power and thousands hunkered down in schools and community centers. They're wondering what's going to be left. What's going to be left when they get to go home, quote unquote, home. Ian is on the verge of powering up once again to hurricane status as it moves over the Atlantic. It's taking aim at South Carolina and its governor also declaring a state of emergency. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Tampa, Florida.